Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Summer Storm, starring Mr. Henry Fonda. Produced for Roma Wines by Charles Vander. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live. To your happiness in entertaining guests. To your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant. As Roma Wines bring you Mr. Henry Fonda in a remarkable tale of... Suspense. It's exciting when there's a storm and strange things can happen. Some people are sensitive to changes in the weather, like me. There's nothing odd about that. It's like people who talk to themselves... I talk to myself a lot. I think about things, and I talk to myself about them. There's nothing odd about that. Come on, Eddie, get the suitcase packed, and let's get out of here. Like that, I talk to myself. You know, just making up my mind because there's no one else around to talk to me. Just getting myself on the move again. Because the landlady wasn't taking care of the room. She was away on a visit, and her husband, Mr. Waters, was slopping around in a bathrobe trying to run the place. Come on, Eddie. He never makes the bed. You use the same towel for a week. It's time to get out. Lock up the suitcase and get going. Uh Uh-oh. There's Waters. Guess you can't sneak out without his seeing you. Uh, There's a mean man, Eddie. You can tell by his little eyes. All fat men are good-natured. Look at him, stuffing himself with pig's knuckles or whatever they are. Well, come on. Hello, Eddie. Morning, Mr. Waters. Yeah. Pig's knuckles don't taste as good as they did an hour ago. Yeah. Guess I'll feed the rest of them to Graham's dog. Well, that'd be nice, Mr. Waters. Yeah. Taking your laundry out? No, sir. These are clothes. I'm leaving, sir. You what? Leaving. I'm sorry. What's the matter, Eddie? Don't you like the place? Yes, sir, but uh, I, I got to get closer to my work. Here's the keys before I forget them. Uh, better, better wait a while, Eddie. It looks like we're going to have a storm sometime today. Oh, I don't mind a storm, Mr. Waters. I'm funny that way. Yeah. It'd be a lot better if you'd wait till the wife gets back. Won't be more than a couple of hours. Oh, you mean she'd blame you for my leaving? Uh, might. Got a nasty tongue. Stick around till she gets back, Eddie. No, I gotta be going. Besides, I ain't feeling so hot. I'm feeling bad all morning. It's getting worse, Eddie. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Waters. Uh, it's my stomach. I'm sorry, Mr. Waters, honest, but I gotta go. Wait a minute. Ain't you forgetting something? Forgetting something? What are you trying to pull, anyhow? I don't get it. You don't, huh? What about the rent? The rent? Last week's rent. What do you think I am, a sucker? Well, I paid my rent. Oh, you did, huh? Give me that suitcase. Well, I paid it to your wife before she went away. That's your story. Go ahead and leave if you want to, but this suitcase stays here until I get that rent. But you've already got it. You know I paid it to Mrs. Waters. You're trying to make me out a liar? No, but, but you got were Got a here. receipt? She never gave me one. She said I didn't need it. Give me that suitcase. Don't you take a swing at me. You can't slap me around. No. Now, no, no, wait. Eddie. Eddie. My, my back. Stop pushing. Well, you asked for it. Eddie, let go. Oh, you don't like it when I fight back, huh? Eddie, you're killing me. Oh, I'm not, but maybe I should. Oh, help. 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 Somebody. Help. Yeah, you had enough. Help. Help. 
Better let him go. He looks bad, Eddie. Uh-huh. Who, who are you talking to? Myself. Get over there, you fat <laughs> Pushed him too hard, I guess. Gee, he looks bad. He's out cold, Eddie. Mr. Waters? Mr. Waters, you all right? Somebody at the door. Better be quiet. Hey, Waters! That's Mr. Graham from next door. That clock's awful loud. You in there, Waters? Hey, hey, what's up, Graham? Come on up here, old barrel. Something fishy going on. Huh? Well, well, what's going on? Come here to the door and listen. I don't hear nothing. Something fishy was going on in there. Well, 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 what do you mean? Waters was yelling his head off a minute ago. Now he won't answer the door. Hey! Hey, Waters, you all right? You don't hear him. Well, that's what I mean. I think we ought to go in and see what's the matter. You mean, you, you mean just walk in? Well, what do you say? Uh, They're coming in here, Eddie. I said, what do you You've got to get away. Well, well, Out the back door. No, no, no. No, they can see it from there. The attic, that's it. They don't know about that. What do you mean? What do you mean? Up the stairs, but don't make any noise. Better not let them find you, Eddie. Up there, you... Up there where you help Mrs. Waters store the blankets. Just step over Mr. Waters, Eddie. He looks bad. There. Now, quiet. Well, I don't know. What's the Right up here is a place to hide from him. And if they start upstairs, I can crawl in the attic. Well, I'll try. Waters! Waters! Now I gotta listen. No answer, Graham. I gotta see what they do. But can't let them see me. Come on. I'm going in. There. I, 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 I guess we'd better see what's wrong. Go ahead, try the door. No, it ain't locked. Come on in. Do you think, you think we are? Sure. I'll bet it's pretty something's wrong in here. Come on. Well, I don't like it. I'm getting out. And leave me alone? Nothing doing. But well, this ain't none of my business, Graham. Why, well, I'd feel like a fool if Waters came strolling down those stairs. Well, he's not gonna... Look! Look under the table! Good Lord! Waters! Say, say, listen. Let's get the table away. Don't stand there. No, I, I, I don't like this, Graham. Let's get the table away, I tell you. Maybe he's hurt bad. All right. Come on, grab the table. Oh, look at that. There, there. Waters? Waters, you all right? We, we, we better call a doctor. Yeah, there's the phone over there. Oh, yes. Hey, wait! Hmm? We don't need no doctor. Hmm? We need the police. The, 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 the p -p -p police? Yeah. The guy's dead. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you a star, Mr. Henry Fonda, in Summer Storm by Louis Este. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills... Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. To mark the return of good living, this week has been designated National Wine Week. Good living is simply a lot of little things that are part of the American way of life, says famed hostess Elsa Maxwell. Little things like greeting guests with a friendly welcome of a glass of port. A simple meal made flavorful with a glass full of burgundy or sauterne. I often serve Roma California port at the end of a meal and later in the evening with fruit and nuts. Because rich, fruity Roma port served cool is a choice wine both men and women enjoy. Simple, but adds so much to the enjoyment of the evening. Red... Red Roma Port is a proud wine in a family of great wines with fruity fragrance and deliciously sweet nectar-like taste. Like all Roma wines, always unvaryingly good. Remember, because of uniformly fine quality at reasonable cost, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. Always ask for Roma. R-O-M-A. Roma Wines. Now featured at new low prices. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Henry Fonda as Eddie in Summer Storm, a play well calculated to keep you in suspense.
dead. Waters was dead. The words made me weep, sick all over. I hadn't hit him hard. I, I just grabbed him around the neck and pushed him back when the fight went out of him. I remember the table, though. When he fell against it, it tipped up and must have smashed the back of his head. That was it. That had killed him. And now they'd start looking for me, and when they found me, they'd hang me. They'll say you killed him, Eddie, and you'll hang for it. They're calling the police now. When they find you here, they'll say you killed him, whether you meant to or not. And they'll be right, Eddie. You did. But maybe you can get away. Listen. Be quiet. See what's going on down there. No sound but the clock. Wonder where they are. You can tell the police about this when they get here, Graham. Stick around. You're a witness, too. No, no, sir. I'm going back home. I don't want to get mixed up in this thing. What's the matter? You yellow? No, no, I ain't yellow. I told you before, this was none of my business, and I'm getting out. All right, right go on. Get out. I'll wait here until the police come. Maybe now's your chance, Eddie. He's all alone. Sneak downstairs before the police come. Get out of this house and get away, far away. But watch out for the stairs. They squeak. Who's there? your chance. That heavy chest. Drop it on him. Of course, you don't want to kill him, but but if you do, you can get away from here. Just, just lift it over the rail and drop it. You killed one man, or they'll say you did. They can only hang you once. Lift it slowly, Eddie. Slowly. Lift it over. Quiet. You missed your chance. You let the clock scare you. He's gone. The police, they're here. the first time, panic overtook me. I set down the chest and stepped back into the shadows. Beside me was the door to the hall closet, and I remembered that in there was the trap door which led to the attic. I slipped in. I got a foot on a wall hook and scrambled up over the clothes that were hanging there. I pushed back the little trap door, lifted myself through the hole, and, and listened for a minute. I could hear the muffled voices, but but I couldn't hear what they were saying. They must be down there with Mr. Waters. Somebody's coming up the stairs. He's coming down the hall. The attic was long and low. He wouldn't think of anyone being up in there. Or would he? It was dark except for the light from a small ventilator. I moved back into the shadows. I crouched low because the space was too small to stand up in. Suddenly, my hand brushed against a short piece of pipe. It had been left there for a long time and the dust was thick on it. But it was a weapon. It made me feel safer. I moved quietly over to the trap door and waited. Get ready for him, Eddie. If he opens the trap door, you'll have to hit him. They can only hang you once. Anybody up there, officer? No. Nobody here. That's all I remembered for a while. 
I must have passed out for hours. When I woke up, the attic was black and heavy with heat. Still, there was no storm. Only a vague threat and distant thunder. And inside of me, there was a threat, too. The beginning of the storm. My head ached and my mouth was dry. I knew there was cold water in the icebox and I wanted it. The storm was coming closer inside of me. And I had to be moving. I slid the cover back and listened. The house was quiet with only the ticking of the big hall clock. So I dropped through the hole and started down the stairs. Don't let that clock scare you, Eddie. There's no one here now. Maybe you can get out now, Eddie. There's your suitcase in the hall. Don't forget that. Someone's at the door. Hello, Mrs. Waters. The wife wants oh, me. Oh, it's you, Mr. O'Farrell. Mm -hmm. I'm glad someone came over, even you. I've been alone for hours. Ever since the cops got me back from my sister. Yeah, yeah. Well, the wife says that... Oh, gosh. I can't tell you how bad I feel about this. Come in, Mr. O'Farrell. He was a swell man, Mrs. Waters. Uh, your husband, I mean. Yes, yes, he was. Yes, really, really swell. But they didn't come any better. Well, uh, anyway, the wife's seen you from the window, and she says... Won't well, you come in, Mr. O'Farrell? In? In there? I mean... Just for a minute. Well, all right. J just for a minute. They won't find you, Eddie. Not if you stay quiet and keep back here in the shadows. I, I, I can't stay long, you know. And anyway, the wife wants to know if there's anything we can do. I, I mean, if you're scared to be alone or anything. No, no, there's nothing. Just finished up my dinner and I'll go to bed very shortly and I'm not frightened. Oh, gosh. It was awful, simply awful. The way he was lying there and breathing so heavy. Oh. I was standing right there looking at him. And it, it was the way he was breathing that got me sort of a, a, a gasping. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, I know, Mr. O'Farrell. But he's gone now and there isn't any good in... Listen, listen. In... Did you hear something? Listen. Hear something? Where? It sounded like somebody breathing. Stop breathing, Eddie. I don't hear anything. Good Lord, it sounded just like a... What on earth are you talking about? Your nerves are all on edge, Mr. O'Farrell. Uh, no, I... Uh, look, look, I, I gotta be getting back. If you're sure there ain't nothing you need now... No, no, I'm, I'm quite all right. Well, if there's anything you want, you just call I'm on. going right to bed. I, I don't feel well. Uh, I shouldn't wonder, I shouldn't wonder. Well, I'll tell my Never wife... Never mind, I, I'll be all right. Mm. Good night, Mr. O'Farrell, and don't worry about me. Yes, well, uh, good night. Uh, I gotta get back. At uh, the wife, you know. Good night. I gave her an hour to get to bed and to sleep. I stayed right there counting the seconds and listening to the ticking of the big clock in the hall. My muscles were stiff. My throat was dry and sore from swallowing. I hardly dared breathe. Finally, I slipped out, picked up my suitcase, started to tiptoe out. The back door would be the best, I thought. I went slowly in the dark, thinking that I could see the spot in the kitchen where Mr. Waters' body had been after the fight. But the back door was in blackness. I tried the knob softly. The door wouldn't open. It was locked. Not with a night latch, but with the old-fashioned iron locks that were on all the doors in the house. There was no way out without the key. <laughs> I started for a window. That was no good either. The screens were heavy and were nailed firmly in place. I'd help nail them myself. I knew that cutting them would make too much noise. There was no way out except with a key. And that must be in Mrs. Waters' room. Back down the hall, I went to the downstairs bedroom. The door was unlocked. And I opened it. And listened. She's asleep, Eddie. Listen. Keys must be on the dresser, Eddie. Right over there. The storm was getting close outside, and I felt all stormy inside. I had to get the keys, get out of this house. It wasn't too dark to see Mrs. Waters in bed. She was breathing heavily. I brushed past the bed, and my knee touched a chair. I went on until I felt something waist high. The dresser. 
I moved my hand slowly over the top. First some clothing. And I felt around for the keys. They weren't there. I felt more slowly. A hairbrush. A comb. Then a pile of hairpins. Where was the key? <laughs> I held my breath until Mrs. Waters started breathing regularly again. I was shaking now and scared, and the storm was building up inside. I reached into a drawer. I tried not to make any noise, but there was some. I reached inside. There was something steely and cold. The key? No. No scissors. Long ones. Sharp and pointed. <laughs> The phone was frightening. I wanted to run, to get out of the room, but I couldn't remember where the door was. I held the scissors like a weapon, a knife, and flattened myself against the wall. Oh, no, the fear, the, the phone. The phone. Eddie, Eddie hides somewhere. Oh, the phone at this hour. I stepped back into the closet and pulled some clothes in front of me just before she snapped on the light over the bed. I'm coming, I'm coming. I talk oh, softly to myself like I always do when I'm alone and scared. You've got the scissors, Eddie. If she comes in here, you'll have to use them. They must know you killed Mr. Waters. It wouldn't be right to kill her, too, but... But what if she finds you, Eddie? You're no killer, Eddie. But you can't be caught. You can't. If she opens the door, do it. Do it quickly, Eddie, and then run. Where's that dang bathrobe? All right, all right. She didn't find you, Eddie. You didn't have to kill her. She just took her robe off the hook. Hello? Yes? You didn't have to kill well, her, hello, did you? Mrs. Perry. Not yet. What? What's that? But now's your chance, Eddie. Well, that's real nice. Her handbag's on the bed. Oh, I wouldn't think. What? Let's see. Well, all right, then. Here they are. I'll stay up and let The keys, you... Eddie. Get the back door before she's through. Hurry. The storm outside was like the storm inside me. Violent and vicious. But it kept me moving. I slipped along beside the house. Then I stepped over the hedge and ran along in the shadow of the house next door. I was getting away from all that... The Graham's dog, a snarling little cur, and he came to his side of the fence and watched me. I'll kill him, Eddie. Whether you want to or not, reach over the fence and strangle him. You have to stop him, Eddie. The whole neighborhood will be up in a minute. Butch! Butch! Now you stop that barking and come in here. Come on, get in the house. Come on, get in here. Now you can go, Eddie. Get out of town. Way out of town. I walked a long time in the rain while the storm inside me settled down in the same steady rhythm as the raindrops. I hadn't eaten all day and I was weak and shaky. The water dripped from me and the bag slapped against my leg and my shoes made little splashing noises in the mud. I counted my footsteps. I counted to a thousand and then started over. And then through the rain I saw an all-night diner. I shook the rain from my hat and looked inside and there was just a man in an apron, no one else. I hesitated for a moment, but the smell of food and coffee came to me. And I opened the door and walked in. Oh, what a bean. A coffee. Coffee? Hey, bad. Boy, you're really wet. Yeah. Boy. Give me a sandwich, any kind of sandwich. Sure, coming up. Uh, look, Jim, take off the coat and let me hang it up by the coffee boiler. Oh, I'm all right. Let me have the sugar. Sugar? Sure. Yeah. Uh, cream? No. Beef sandwich, all right. It's all I got. Well, hello, Casey. What's cooking with the police department on a night like this? Oh, plenty, Mike. Give me a cup of coffee in the hurry, will you? A cop, Eddie. Don't run. Take it easy. Coffee coming up, Casey. Hey, kid, uh, beef sandwich okay? Sure. Oh, this raincoat's dripping all over your floor. I'll hang it up, Mike. Okay. It's really wet out there. Yeah. He's hanging up his gun, too, Eddie. 
me if you can get it if you have to. Well, how'd you get so wet, kid? I didn't see you before. Uh, I got caught in a storm. Ah, I see. Well, thanks, Mike. Look, kid, maybe you better come along with me down to the station house. It was done. It was over. They'd caught me. I'd felt free up until now. I looked at where his gun was hanging by his raincoat. Now I'd have to try it. I'd have to kill again, I thought. I could get them both and get away, maybe. They could only hang me once. How about it, kid? I'll book you as a sleeper. By morning, you'll be dried out and on your way. Okay? You mean... You mean just sleep there? Why, sure. <laughs> there won't be any charge against you. <laughs> well, thanks. But I, I got to get along. Okay. Have it your own way. What I owe you, Mike? Just a dime. Yeah. Thanks. Have oh, you been hitting the ball tonight? Oh, no, I'll see. I've been taking the doc around. Have to go back and pick him up. Oh, emergency case, huh? Yeah, Doc called it uh, botulism, uh, something like ptomaine poisoning. Said it was from eating pig's feet. Old Lady Waters up on Elm Street. Ah, you got to be awful careful of them things. <sighs> yeah, they'd warned her about them, but I guess she ate them anyhow. They were from the same batch that killed her husband earlier today. But she didn't know that was what happened to him, and she ate him too. Ptomaine's bad stuff. Hit you? Just like that. Yeah. Well, so long. So long, Casey. More coffee, kid? No, thanks. Did you hear that about Mr. and Mrs. Waters both dying from the same thing? Yeah. Pig's knuckles. Ah, uh, you gotta be careful of that main stuff. Well, looks like the storm's over. Sure is. The moon's out. Just a summer storm and now it's all over. Yeah, it'll make it nice for you. You feel all right? Me? I feel swell. <laughs> Roma Wines have brought you Henry Fonda, star of Summer Storm. Tonight's study in Suspense. This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. Tomorrow is Friday. If you are one of those many people who invite friends into dinner on Friday night, here's a suggestion on how to make that meal really exciting. Dine by soft candlelight and serve Roma California Sauterne says famed hostess Elsa Maxwell. Pale golden Roma Sauterne adds not only glamour, but goodness to the meal. I serve chilled Roma Sauterne regularly with seafood and chicken. They are perfect flavor mates. Enjoy Roma Sauterne often. Like all Roma wines, Roma Sauterne is wine at its best, in uniform quality, reflecting the heritage of grapes, carefully selected at peak of flavor in California's choicest vineyards, gently but quickly pressed, then by a process as slow and as old as time, brought to liquid perfection under the patient guidance of Roma's ancient winemaking skill, then bottled at Roma's own famed wineries, now featured at new low prices by leading wine merchants everywhere. Henry Fonda appeared to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of The House on 92nd Street. Next Thursday, you will hear Lucille Ball in Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs> 